Something extraordinary is taking place in Indonesia. A magnificent future megacity that will soon become the capital is being built in the jungle. It is a new city that is envisioned as a futuristic metropolis for Indonesia's future generation. This is Nusantara, which means the vision of the Indonesian archipelago, and if this megaproject were to be completed successfully, it would definitely provide a new vision for the future of Indonesia. But why is a new mega city being built in the first place? To make sense of this, we have to go back to the current capital of Indonesia, Jakarta, which is currently experiencing a major catastrophe. The weight of its structures is causing the city to sink. As subsurface water levels drop and the Java Sea rises, the city is starting to experience floods every few months. This means that Jakarta will inevitably sink in the future, and there is little doubt that in a few decades, a major portion of the city will already be submerged. After years of deliberation about a potential plan to solve this problem before it becomes disastrous, the Indonesian parliament passed legislation to relocate the country's capital to the island of Java under the new name, Nusantara or IKN. The name of Nusantara was selected to express the national vision known as Wawasan Nusantara, which is an old Javanese term for the Indonesian archipelago region. The city will be located on the east coast of the island of Borneo, in what is currently part of the province of East Kalimantan. The future capital city has also been envisioned as a futuristic metropolis for Indonesia's youthful generation. Officials are hoping that the younger generation of Indonesia can contribute and collaborate to accommodate innovation in the three areas of development, namely health, energy, and economics. And in August of 2022, President Joko Widodo officially announced to the nation the future plans for the nation's capital. He confirmed that there will be a transfer of Indonesia's capital city from Jakarta to East Kalimantan in the near future, further solidifying the government's ambitious aims. Overall, the president's decision to transfer the capital city was influenced by various factors, including population distribution, encouraging economic development outside of Java, and addressing the clean water supply problem on Java Island. It was also influenced by the rapid pace of land conversion, concentrated urbanization, and the high degree of economic losses in Indonesia. In Jakarta, more problems are mounting, ranging from issues with water supply, traffic, and ground subsidence. Unlike Jakarta, which is a very polluted city, Nusantara plans to be a low emissions zone. Nusantara also aspires to be a hub for leading industries such as pharmaceutical, medical, and technology, as well as all those that encourage long-term development. An extensive network of public transportation is also planned in IKN to reach the aim of 80% mobility supported by non-private transportation. The city will be serviced by a citywide network of bike lanes, a metro system consisting of two rail lines, a bus rapid transit system, and autonomous minibuses. According to President Widodo, IKN Nusantara aspires to be the most sustainable city in the world, a symbol of national identity, and a driving force in Indonesia's economy for the future. IKN is also intended to be the capital city's hub in the future, with a smart city system that is connected with nature. IKN aims to be a green and smart global metropolis and contemporary city with world-class infrastructure. It will become a symbol of the nation's identity. The city plans to be built in phases until 2045. This vast project is part of Widodo's aim for Indonesia to break free from the middle-income trap and enter the ranks of wealthy, developed countries, as well as to meet the country's zero-carbon promise. Suharso Manoarfa, the Minister for National Development Planning, claims that the Indonesian government would develop the entirely new capital at a cost of more than $35 billion. Phase 1 of the mega-project, which would cost about $3.4 billion, will be fully supported by the state budget for 2022-2024. The initial plans to complete the first phase of the mega-project are occurring as the country's central bank forecasts weaker economic growth, a situation that may bring unforeseen problems. However due to the projected political and economic advantages and President Widodo's will to leave a political legacy, plans are still going ahead. The first phase of Nusantara would mostly consist of government facilities, as well as schools, hospitals, and leisure amenities such as retail malls. Work has already started, including clearing land and constructing worker access roads in East Kalimantan, Indonesia's second biggest province and Borneo Island's easternmost region. Borneo, which is the world's third biggest island, is a largely untouched land area. Almost the whole geographical region is unknown, and its 18 million population are centered on the shore, as opposed to the 2 million indigenous people who dwell inland. 
The eastern area of the island already has two large towns, Samarinda and Balikpapan, whose operations are almost exclusively dependent on cutting down the natural forest and producing oil, which is bad for the ecology. Balikpapan even has its own refinery, complete with smog and pollution. Thus the administration is attempting to create a three-city green ecosystem, as a result of the collaboration of the triangle cities of Samarinda, Balikpapan, and IKN Nusantara. Nusantara will be the largest of the three and occupy at least 56,000 hectares of urbanized land, initially housing one and a half million people with figures projected to grow. While IKN will be the heart of government and green innovation, Samarinda, as East Kalimantan's historical center, will be the foundation for energy sector revitalization and Balikpapan will be the core of downstream oil and gas industry development and logistics. A core component of planning the new city is the belief that Nusantara should not repeat Jakarta's error of failing to develop an environmental strategy that allows for long-term green sustainability. This is something that politicians have spoken openly about. According to President Widodo, IKN will be the beginning point for an Indonesia built on a green economy, via innovation and technology. The president has also previously promised not to invade protected green areas, but it is hard to believe that something like that will actually be possible in such a large mega-construction in a jungle. The biggest threat from urbanization will be to the island's orangutans, a species that is already on the verge of extinction. Aside from the Borneo pygmy elephant, other species include the Sunda pangolin, sun bear, and clouded leopard. The environmental consequences will be immense, adding to the deforestation that has been occurring for over 50 years and is harming dozens of species. It is inevitable that the construction of Nusantara will have a significant environmental impact and this is actually the source of most of the criticism for the megacity. However the preliminary models and renderings depict a Nusantara interwoven with nature, with buildings surrounded by vegetation. At the moment, no features of its urban growth have been developed yet, despite the fact that western sprawl has been ruled out in favor of high-rise structures. Taking inspiration from other other newly created cities in Asia, particularly in China, it is hoped that Nusantara will be a city that avoids formulas from the colonialism past, seen in cities like Jakarta, and that it will follow an environmental policy similar to that of sponge cities, in order to avoid the current capital's problems. Historically, when a capital city is relocated, the original location remains populous and even grows in certain cases. Some examples are Lagos, Rio de Janeiro, Melbourne, and Philadelphia, which all grew in population and size even after losing their title as the capital. Jakarta is not projected to shrink in size in the immediate future and there are no official plans to move the inhabitants. However the city is likely to decay gradually, as there will be no continuous flow of public income and there are no other alternatives to prevent the city from sinking. Like Venice, Jakarta is a city that will continue to sink for as long as there are people living there. At such a point, the city will become inhabitable and Indonesians will have no choice but to prioritize the growth of Nusantara. According to Susantono, the head of Nusantara Capital City Authority, Indonesia will also depend significantly on the private sector and community fundraising to complete the mega city. However, attempts to acquire funds for the new capital have been in turmoil, as SoftBank Group Corporation founder Masayoshi Sun, an initial investor, recently withdrew his offer. Susantono said there is still interest from a variety of small, medium, and large-sized businesses, but would not elaborate further. Indonesia has been approaching other international investors ranging from Saudi Arabia to China, while Russia's President Vladimir Putin recently offered Russian railways to invest in Nusantara. Despite the financial challenges, if they can successfully get the right funding and pull off this major project, it really would be a spectacle to see. Not only would it change the entire landscape of Southeast Asia, but it would truly propel Indonesia in its hope to one day become a major economic powerhouse. Just imagine living and working in a smart megacity in the jungles of Asia, relying on green energy and sustainable technology. That would definitely be a step forward in establishing Indonesia as a country of prominence, innovation and prestige. So, what do you think about the futuristic megacity of Nusantara? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't already, feel free to like this video, press the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.